designer. He's the guy who can make your house a home. And maybe make your husband a little handier. No, you're not this alone. is the Frank Fontana Show. Because I'm going to make this place your home. On Chicago's very own 720 WGN. Welcome back to the show, folks. I'm Frank Fontana. And we're about to unload on the topic of interior design. Whether you aspire to be one, aspire to hire one, this should be a good conversation. Because uh, I have a lot of folks sitting in front of me right now that are all very experienced, have come through the School of uh, College of DePage Interior Design Program. Uh, and to kick it off, joining me is the Assistant Professor, Jean Kielb. How are you, Jean? I'm wonderful, thanks. Good. Why don't you speak right nice and close to that microphone? Oh, I'll turn that around for you. Yeah, hold on. Dave will come out and tweak everything for you. Okay. Thanks for coming in. Well, we are very happy to be here. Yeah, we've got a full program. house. And by the way, broadcasting live on Facebook right now. Say hi to everybody. Say hi, Mom. There hi. we go. <laughs> so, Jean, did, did you start out as an interior designer first? Or, like, tell me your story. Well, I always knew that this was what I wanted to do from the time I was a little girl playing with Barbies and all the other little girls long time ago would be dressing up their dolls and doing all sorts of things and i made everybody's barbie house uh, and and so i to just, scale though um <laughs> close to it it fit the barbies well there you go <laughs> and and so i always knew that's what i was going to do and i got a bachelor's degree in interior design and started um doing offices for a number of years for a firm down here by the Merchandise Mart, nice. and then did retail design for um, stores all over the Midwest, and that was really fun. And then you know, life kind of catches up with you. I had um, a little three-year-old and twins and thought, I can't be traveling all over the Midwest anymore. And an opportunity came up at the College of DuPage to start teaching part-time and started teaching all of the CAD programs, and that led into teaching lighting design and interior systems and details and um, I did that for seven years and then about 14 or 15 years ago I became the full-time teacher at COD and now I'm the only full-time now I'm the only full-time teacher um, but we have amazing part-time faculty all working designers fabulous designers as all of these people here can tell you the um, the role that our part-time faculty made with their successes in in competition and in the real world yeah I can't wait to hear the stories yeah um, so before we do that though tell me in your opinion what makes a great interior designer Oh gosh, it's it's sort of I think half your design skills that that most of us learn in school and then the other half is just that work ethic that seeing the things that you do, seeing projects awesome. through to the end. Yeah. And and really design is like a puzzle. I'm a puzzler person and it is it is though being able to follow up on on all of the details being able to sell your design if you can if you can come up with wonderful designs but you can't sell it and make the client understand that that you are doing the things um, suggesting the things that's the best thing for them. Um, to me, that's that's the best way to grow your business and mm -hmm. be successful is do the right thing for the client. Yeah. And sometimes that takes not doing the right thing for yourself, right? Correct. And in the long run, it ends up to be where I think the designer is more successful then. Yeah, because your client is king. It is. It is. Yeah. That's definitely true. So, I mean, for, for those who've never hired a designer, what should be some of the first things as a listener? And folks, feel free to chime in here, 312-981-7200, if you have any questions for uh, Jane, myself, or any of the, the, the gals here in studio about the, working with interior designers, experience with interior designers, or if you're a budding interior designer who's thinking about going to school and want to learn more about the College of DuPage program, we will be happy to talk to you about that. Um, so uh, if I'm like to engage you for the first time as mm -hmm. a potential you know, client of yours, what are some of the things I should know? What, what are some of the things that, from the inside you would share with people and say, you know, ask these five questions? Oh, I, I normally, before I would ever meet with a client, I tell them to um, get 
their thoughts together first. Um, make a list of their priorities. Look for, sometimes what I think is a certain style is not what they think is a certain style. Okay. Pictures. Um, I'm going to play devil's advocate, right, as a, as a client. All right. But I'm hiring you. Like, why should I do that? Well, I can I can spend a lot of time looking up different options for you, but the meter is running. And, Good answer. <laughs> <laughs> and so at that point, you know, if you could just put some thought into what you want, I can help guide you in the correct direction. And as, as long as the designer is actually listening to you and trying to incorporate your ideas. Um, I've had clients before that want to get everybody else's opinion too and you know what the other the other people aren't working in those spaces the other people aren't living in those spaces we're designing this for you and i won't let you do anything that isn't going to be a good design solution but it might not be what that other person does but don't worry about that yeah. make this your space so so first note uh is the experience of a of a designer and a client is a mutual experience. It's it is. not, and, and I very rarely, and I don't know about any of you ladies, have had the experience where a client says, "Here's a check, go do what you do." Yeah, I don't think that scenario exists too often. No, uh, and, and uh, I've had it. I've had it happen, and it's a great experience. <laughs> it's like it, you can't believe it. It's wonderful. <laughs> yeah. It's like Christmas. You know, you can really truly. Do what you've been hired to do. Yeah. But what I think is really important for people to understand that's listening who are interested in the world of design or considering hiring interior designers is that it is a dance. It is a collaboration. Even though you are hiring a designer, it is a, a, a partnership. It, you know, there's no way we can fully, you know, be inside somebody's head. Mm -hmm. To grasp every nuance of what they want, and that's the the, the second part. To I, I, would, I would ask you is, what are the right questions to ask? Well, sometimes I think you don't talk about um, the money first. How much? How much are your services going to charge? You don't want to have some something come up later where there's a misunderstanding about what that's. You say do talk money first or don't talk money. Well. First? Just make sure before the end of the conversation that... <laughs> so don't that, lead with the budget conversation. Right. But get an idea of the scope of their project. Sometimes people are waving at Sorry, us. that's my niece out there. So. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Some, sometimes, um, you know, they think that, that they've got a lot of money set aside for a project. I had someone one time say that they had $2,500 to work with, thinking that that was going to be a, a, just an exceptional amount of money. And then they start listening listing all the things that they want to to accomplish and it's like that's that's a fraction of what something oh, is yes. really going to cost and and that you let, i want to hold you on that note uh we're going to take a break then i want to talk about expectations realistic expectations when it comes to managing the client and managing the budget and we're going to introduce our panel as soon as we come back uh don't go away folks we'll be right back And screw that, screw that. Any random toy you got, well, I can do that, do that. Don't make Welcome back to the Frank Montana Show. I got a laughing group of ladies in front of me. Dave, they're making fun of your intro song here that you made for me. I see they like to dance as well. They like to have yeah. fun. Why not? Right? You can tell they're very creative. Exactly. <laughs> and their moves as well. That's how they do it at the College of DePage, man. <laughs> We're here with the Interior Design Degree Program folks here and uh, some, some graduates as well as a, a student here. We have Jane uh, Kielb, who's the assistant professor. Jane, thank you so much. You're welcome. Um, we're going to introduce our panel here. We have uh, Allison Schutz. Hi there. I, I just said it and I screwed it up, didn't it's okay. I? okay. It's all right. Shuts. Shuts. There it is. Yeah, and we, we have Sarah Venisek. Yes, hello. Nailed it. There you go. Sherry Bolton. Hello. Yeah, we'll get everybody's up and just talk right into that microphone when, you, when your name comes up. And Mariella Sanchez. Hello. Who I had the pleasure of meeting yesterday during a shoot for the, our TV show over at Studio 41. Studio 41? Yeah, amazing place. Uh, if you haven't been there, I, you should shame on you. <laughs> Studio 41 is, uh, for me, one of the meccas of, uh, in our area for you know home design and, and cabinetry and plumbing and tile. It has everything. Doors, windows. Doors, windows, you name it. 
Yeah, I'm a fan. It's kind of like Six Flags. You can't see it all in one day. <laughs> You're so right. You really are so right. You could get stuck in the in the bathtub aisle for a day. Definitely. Especially when you get in them and you just kind of like, you know, I, that's why I do it. I, if we I'm going to sell it, i got to feel it. What would you say? We don't go that far. You don't go that far? Uh, no. You're missing out, let me tell you. All right, so Sherry, let's start with you. Uh, you you came through the program. Now you are an assistant professor. Is that what you said? I am. And uh, you had the privilege of having a, a really great uh, experience at the White House, correct? Yes, and great is an understatement. Tell me about it. Well, I um, graduated from the College of DuPage, and um, after reading the book uh, from President Obama, The Audacity of Hope, um, I had the audacity to pick up the phone and call the White House, and I was hoping Hold on, they would call me back. <laughs> you're just like, oh, hi, uh, this is uh, Sherry. I'll just call to see if you're looking for an interior designer for the White House. Uh, how does that work? Absolutely. That's just like that? Idea. Just like that. What was the message like? Was there a machine? Like, hey, no, it's, it's, I spoke with the Brock. live person. <laughs> well, yeah, that would have been nice, but no, I spoke with the live person. I told them what my endeavors were. I asked them. Um, that I was interested in decorating for uh, the Christmas holiday season, and I wanted them to take a look at my portfolio, and could they tell me what the process was? What? Yeah. It's that easy, huh? Yeah. Well, I can't yeah, believe to, it. to get in. Yeah, but I'm sure I can't believe they even take your call. Like, I can't believe there's somebody live. It's not like a machine that would just take people's calls. You know what? You, you would be amazed at the number of volunteers that not only take calls, but write children back, write individuals back, give personal letters and invitations to the president and the first lady, and they do respond. <clears throat> wow. That's amazing. So you got in there, and what was it like to meet the Obamas? I mean, were they, were they warm, welcoming, and did you get a chance to actually physically meet them? And We did. We did. We physically met. I physically met Michelle Obama, and it was during, at that time, it was during the um, Paris bombings. Hmm. We did see the president leave the White House, get on his helicopter, and get Crazy. saluted. And, and and go off into uh, to, to to Paris, but wow. we did meet Michelle, and I did tell her, as I'm sure most Chicago, and um, we wanted to know when she was coming back, mm -hmm. and she said she said I, I hope it's soon. I hope it's soon. You think they're gonna come back and live here when it's all said well, and done? Well, you know, they do have a home. So they do. Have, maybe yeah. they can come and I visit, think visit. From time to time. I think they'll visit. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, good for you. That's an amazing experience. Um, you know, she's a big HGTV fan, Michelle Obama. Yes. Yeah, we got to get her to be an FYI fan now. Yes. FYI, our new network. <laughs> All right. All right. So let's uh, let's talk to uh, to let's see, Allison. Yes. Tell me about it. You're you're graduating this year. Is that I'll what be it is? Graduating this summer. This summer. Yes, I am in my last year of um, school. And I worked my way up to just having a few classes during the semester so I can have an internship during my last year, which I am I'm currently interning at a nice place in River North, and I'm learning a lot and loving it. And what, uh, are you specializing in commercial, residential, or kind um, of? I would like to be specializing in commercial. Right now I'm interning at a residential because you can learn a bunch from both sectors and they can combine, yeah. especially the way commercial is working nowadays. Um, yeah, commercial's fun. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Residential? Hmm. I mean, it's it's still good. There's I lots like of stuff out there. Lots yeah, no, it's a, it, listen, it's all about, you know, I don't know about you, you girls, but uh, finding, I think, is equally as important for the client to find the right designer, it is to have the designer find the right client. Absolutely. Correct. Mm -hmm. You know, I think those synergies are, are super important to have a great relationship, because when mm -hmm. it doesn't go that way, it ain't pretty. Mm -mm. Sarah. Yes. Hi. Hi. Tell us your story. So, I graduated from College of DuPage in May. Um, in my last semester, I was an intern at a hospitality design firm in the West Loop oh, cool. and subsequently was hired there. So now I'm full time um, designing hotels and restaurants. Isn't it fun? It's I just designed two fun. restaurants, yeah, uh, one in Wrigleyville and one in Andersonville, and it's, I think it's one of my favorite things. Mm -hmm. Love it. So That's out of the box. <laughs> I like to push the envelope with design, and, and, and sometimes you don't get that luxury in residential. Mm -hmm. um, let's talk to uh, Mariella. Mariella, actually. Oh, is is an employee now of Studio 41, right? Yes, I'm, I'm currently full time at Studio 41. I was uh, so I graduated in May from College of DuPage as well, and um, I was actually Studio 41's first intern. Really? Yes. Wow! And, congratulations. Uh, thank you, and and it worked out beautifully. I would say for both of us, it's been a nice partnership. Uh, it's a great time to be with the company. They've they're growing. They're f a, an amazing group. And as a matter of fact, we have a caller with some questions about Studio 41. Hey, Gloria, thanks for calling the show. 
Hi, I'm uh, out in Orland Park, but I have a daughter and son-in-law in Glen Ellen. They will be doing a teardown of their home and building more or less a luxury home. And I was wondering, where is Studio 41? So Studio 41 has um, several locations. There is one in Glenview. Um, okay. That could be good for you to um, Burridge. To yeah. Okay. Burridge is kind of close too. Maybe there are, so. and and also, Maperville. me and Virginie mentioned a place, and I don't know if I have it right. Have you heard of Lux Home Center, or is there something regarding TUB Home Center? I, I wrote it down, and I don't know the exact name now. In the Merchandise Mart, there's a Lux Home, which right. is pretty much oh, the whole first okay. floor. Right. Mm -hmm. That's what um, he said. He also said Merchandise Mart, yes. But I would tell you this, and I'm not being biased, that the pricing is and options are probably a little better at Studio 41. Oh, yeah, um, good to know. Would you say awesome. that? Yeah, would you say that's true? That's true. Definitely something for everybody there. Um, oh, wonderful! There's, there's the high, and you know, there's the low. We we do work with several um, accounts, build firms, contractors, what yeah. have you. Yep. So, so and your website? Definitely check out the website. The different locations are there. Uh, okay. Call, make an appointment. That would be probably the best. Way What's to the go. web address? Shop Studio Forty One. Stop Shop Studio Forty One dot com, Gloria. Com. Okay, thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Good I luck with that. It. Success on your project. Yeah, definitely. And uh, I just want to take a Facebook question coming in off our Facebook live feed uh, from Linda Daniels. She says, hi, I'm here in the South Suburbs, Frank. Do you use primer on kitchen cabinets or paint with primer? Uh, I could, if you all want to chime in on this. Has anybody done this? I've done this a hundred times. What do you, what say you? Um, well, I work for Sherman Williams right now as a part-time, so I definitely get this question a lot going into homes and doing color consults. Um, you want to make sure you sand those cabinets down. Just do a fine grain sanding bit because you don't want to ruin the grain of the of the wood. Make sure you go with the grain of the wood. Go lightly. What would you recommend, like 120 grit or something higher? Well, or? just do it extra fine. Just extra do it. Fine. You don't, don't put too much muscle into it, and then you just kind of sand that down. Make sure you wipe it off. You don't want any sand grit in there. Then you prime it. And then depending upon your wood, if it's too grainy, you want to do an extra coat of primer so it can fill in the holes of the grain. And then um, then you want to have that dry probably about 24 hours, depending on your primer. Anybody at your local Sherwin-Williams can help you out. There's different types of primers for different woods and substrates. Um, but after that, you can go ahead and uh, you can go ahead and paint that. There's specialty paint for cabinets. Um, I know I use Pro Classic at Sherman Williams. That is for trim and doors, and it has a high level in quality, where it actually levels out. So you don't see those brush strokes like you would see, you know, doing it yourself with those sponge with sponge pieces. It's got to get the right brush and. I think you have some beautiful cabinets that look professionally done. Well yes. done. Good One answer. One thing um, I will add with that is mm -hmm. just make sure that you do have all wood cabinets because yes. if they're not, you're going to sand off laminate. Yep. So that's where priming with uh, probably a good multi-purpose well, primer from Sherwin-Williams sure. uh, could, could do the trick for you and then you can go in with the enamel. Fantastic. Yes. Lucas, I don't even have to talk. You guys can do the show for me. This is awesome. I'm going to have you guys come in every Sunday for at least an hour or so. Good question, Linda. I hope that helps. Uh, we're going to take a quick break, and we'll have more with the girls from DuPage College here uh, of Interior Design Program when we come back. The Frank Fontana Show. It's not just home improvement. It's life improvement. Oh, yeah. We try to improve your life one interior design at a time. We're in studio. Joining me are the uh, team from College of the Page Interior Design Program. I say team because we have all sorts of folks here. We have our uh, assistant professor, Jane Keel, joining us. We have Alice and Sherry, Mariella. Uh, Sarah's all in studio, all students, former students. Now some work for the school. Or others are going into their own programs. Uh, some graduating this summer. That's right. Very exciting. Very exciting. We're just uh, talking uh, off mic about um, you know the world of interior design and how it could be funky sometimes. And you know, a couple things that uh, I'd love to talk about is is value. You know, um, people's you know expectations and budgets, and and then even also just valuing us as interior designers. You know, it, what we do is not a tangible thing; it's a service. Don't walk into a a client or a design situation without an idea of what your value is. I mean, I know Sherry and I have had that conversation many times as she was starting her business and being able to ask for um, what you deserve and then giving them value for that. So they have to realize that what you are providing for them is something that they can't really get from anybody else. And what, you, what is the going rate right now? I mean, what are you guys asking for? Do you do hourly? Do you do a, a per job? What, what percentage? What, what, how do you guys do your business? Well, it really depends. I have a full service interior design firm, and it depends. Any 
good designer, um, their rates start at at least 125 and go up from there. Um, you can really consider at medium $150 an hour. And, and on the high end? On the high end, you're 175 225 and then you're... I, I've heard numbers into luxury of oh, 500 yeah, an oh, hour. Oh, yeah, you're luxury when you yeah. get to those numbers. I mean, I'm at 1000 an hour, but that's just because, you know, yeah. I like to... No, I'm kidding. I don't... <laughs> I, that would be nice if I could do that. Um, really nice. No, it would be. But I know yeah, there's just some yeah, big firms out there. You. Yeah, that would be great. <laughs> well, you might be real soon. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I've seen some big companies out there that you know on, on the big corporate level that do charge ridiculous money or charge a guarantee fifteen grand just to walk in their door and talk to them, you know. And 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 if they pick up your pro if they pick up your project, then you know it's 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 a big money thing, yeah. you know. It, it, that that is a luxury to be at that point. Yeah. Well, design by itself, interior design, is a luxury sector anyway. And yes. So. You're dealing a lot of times when you're talking to customers, you're you're really educating customers on the value that you bring to a project. And so I always talk about how much time and how much money I am saving you. And my tagline is getting it right the first time. How many customers have tried projects on their own just to, when it's all said and done, stand back and say, I wish I could have did it this way. I wish I had bought. That's the value that Interior Desire brings to the table. Yep. I agree. I agree. And it's never a, a it's never a bullseye every time though. You know, I mean you could try your darnest to get it right. I mean there's always something that a client will come back and say, Oh, but well, you know, that fabric, you know, I don't know about that fabric or you know, that color. Like, can we just tweak that color? Well, no, that was a custom color made for you specifically for that. You know, so you get that a lot, and it's like you just got to kind of roll with that. And I think in the in the world of interior design, it's a little bit of you know, gotta be able to take a punch to give a punch, don't you think? Mm -hmm. Would you feel that? Mm -hmm. But that doesn't work in your world. <laughs> yeah, maybe not. Okay. Well, hopefully just, that doesn't happen very often. Yes. Yeah. Well, and what I mean by that, let me let me get deeper into that. Is really, uh, you know, it's a give and take. Is really what I'm talking about. You know, you could push an idea, and we could have a notion as designers to say this. I know that this is going to look amazing in your mm -hmm. home, and you might have to push them, and it's a struggle. And then at the end of the day, because they they're hiring you for vision. Right? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. What they lack as a client is a vision of the final product. Because if not, everybody can do it. <laughs> yeah. You know, and I deal with this all the time on the TV show and in our, my real practice. People are always like, oh, yeah, like you said, I, I could do this, I could do this. But when it comes to the room being pulled together and they walk in and they're just like, jaw hits the floor. That's the magic that, mm -hmm. that interior designers do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can say one thing that the College of DuPage is really, really good for, aside from just an excellent education, is they really are trendsetters and cutting edge when it comes to technology. Mm -hmm. And so when it comes to 3D renderings, 3DS Max, um, Photoshop, SketchUp, um, Chief Architect, some of the students know some of all of those programs. And so as a designer, when I meet a customer that's really picky you about a project or they can't visualize it, then I go to plan B, which is give them more detail in a detailed drawing, which is part of the education that you receive at CFD, sure. which makes it really, really, really simple and easy for them to say, oh, now I see the color of those cabinets and all oh, that hardware that really does look nicely. Or that farmhouse sink, ah, oh, I thought I wouldn't like it at first, but now I see it in the rendering and it looks beautiful. And so it really is a added benefit and sure. value to the to have customer. the technology and then like and, and with that with with concept renderings it, how often are you you know because i think that's another gray area too is when you see a rendering it's like oh i, I want this exact thing but then in reality realize budget and types of wood and type of things that are existing in a home change that and and can get you so your target is this is that rendering you know to get us there there's a lot of variables there's a lot of things to get there how do you manage those expectations because you ultimately you, you output and I do this all the time. We have this most amazing 3D rendering you know team that I have, and it's like so photorealistic, but almost to a to a fault because then there's huge expectations on that, and if you can't deliver that, then there's there's problems, mm -hmm. you know. So I, a it's really important that clients understand that they're conceptual, that these are these are moving yes. targets, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and and b the goal is to allow if your budget can get you there, you know, this is the dream. Yes. 
So, yeah. Jane, as, as a professor, well, how, how do you feel about that? Well, I think one of the things um, that, that make the computer-generated rendering so valuable is when you do run into some of those issues that something has to change, it's on the computer, and you can just... Tweak it. Yeah, yeah change out a material and say, here's what happened, here's where we're going to have to make a change. But look, it's still going to be beautiful, and yep. we have to work with, with what we've got. And... And we'll still have this wonderful space. In in the old days when everything was done by hand, you were starting from scratch. When Remember something... the old watercolor drawings you used to do? I mean, oh, yeah. I miss those oh, yeah. days. <laughs> yeah. Well, it certainly make because clients, for the most part, most part can't visualize what something is going to look like. We can get that picture in our head almost at the very beginning, but they can't see it. And with what you see on HGTV and everything is a three-dimensional, um, rendering for clients clients expect that now they yes. just think it's something oh you push that button and you have that rendering well it, it doesn't happen that way oh no but <laughs> hours and sometimes days of rendering right, yeah. and, and right. concept and, and development and, right. yeah, and you're right and there there needs to you know be, that has to be built into the conversation that and how valuable that is because I think people do get you know nowadays you can open up a screen like oh look I'll go on house and that's you know it's almost the same thing no it's not you know it's not. it's yeah. it's a huge process 